Hello, everybody, and this is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about discrete and continuous domains. We are in the Common Core Standard of Functions, and we're going to be defining, evaluating, and comparing functions today, especially looking at domains and ranges and the type of domains that we can have with a function. All right. We, how, our guiding question today is how can you tell if a domain is continuous or discrete? There are two main types of domains, continuous and discrete, and we're going to be able to answer this question by the end of the lesson today. All right, here are two examples of domains. Remember, if you think about what a domain is, a domain is specifically the x values here. Do you remember what the y values are called? The y values are called the range. x values are called the domain. And the domain is the particular numbers of the domain here. This one is discrete. This one is continuous. Can you tell why? Well, you'll be able to tell why here in just a few minutes. There are two different kinds of domains. One is called discrete, and the other one is called continuous. And you will need to know both of these. Let's look at particular examples first, and we'll talk about why they are discrete, like this one. This one is discrete. It's a certain number of values in an interval represented by only dots. Here's a graph example of what we would see. Notice there's only dots, dot, 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 dot. There's not a continuous line there. That is why it's called discrete. It's specific. The other kind is called continuous. And it's all the numbers in the interval represented by a line. So here, we have a whole straight line. Every single number is represented there from 0 to 10. It's called continuous. The domain here is continuous. All right, here is an example. You and your family are going to a concert, and you spend $16. Each adult ticket is $4, and each child ticket is 2 How many adult and child tickets did your family buy? So what are all the possibilities that you could spend? Well, first, let's write a function for this. Let's make the adult tickets x and the child tickets y. Well, 4x plus 2y is 16. This is our function. $4 per adult ticket plus $2 per kid ticket equals a total of $16. Well, how many can you possibly buy? Well, let's make a table. Let's think about it this way. If we had zero adult tickets, that would give us eight child tickets. One adult ticket, six kid tickets. Two adult, four kids. Three adult, two kids. Four adult, zero kids. Those are all the different possibility uh, that we could have of how many different tickets you bought for each different type. Now, if we graph this using 0, 8, 1, 6, 2, 4, 3, 2, and 4, 0, here is what it looks like. Notice the particular points. One there, 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 there. There are five specific types of dots on this graph. Why is that? Why couldn't I put a line all the way through? Well, for starters, this is a discrete domain. It's a discrete domain. There are only a few points in the domain here drawn with dots. If you think about it, you can't have maybe half a ticket. If you think about this, you can't have half a ticket or two and a half tickets. You have to buy a whole number amount of tickets. All right, this domain is discrete. What about this one? Let's do this example. You're buying cheese. Yummy. Swiss cheese is $4 a pound, while cheddar is $2 a pound. X is the number of pounds of Swiss, and Y is for cheddar. You spend $16. How many pounds of each could you buy? Well, notice, this is the exact same equation we just did. 4 times X and 2 times Y. Add them together, and you get $16. Well, would you solve that for Y equals MX plus B? Put it in slope form. All right, what'd you get? Did you get this? Should have gotten y equals negative 2x plus 8. Now, this is a little bit easier to graph than before. We don't have to do a table. All right, we can just put this in the graph, and let's do that. Here it is. We start at 8, and then our slope is negative 2, so we're going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so forth. This is our line. 
Is our domain here discrete or continuous? All right, it is continuous because we have a straight line. We can buy 1.2 pounds of cheese or 0.5 pounds of cheese. We can buy each of those different points that is represented by this line. All right, this is continuous because there's an infinite amount of points in the interval here drawn with a line. All right, try this one. You're in, a, in charge of reserving a hotel room or hotel rooms for a youth soccer team. Each room costs 69 bucks plus $6 per tax per night. You need each room for two nights and you need 10 to 16 rooms. Would you write a function for the hotel cost? All right, did you get it? Each room is $69 plus $6 in tax per night. All right, so it's 69 plus 6 times x. And you need at least 10 to 16. Is this domain continuous or discrete? All right, these are the questions you're going to be asking. And you need 10 to 16. So your x will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Can you have 10.2 rooms or 15.5 rooms? No, you can't. So does that give you a hint on whether your domain is discrete or continuous? All right, here are your answers here. It is discrete because you can't rent 1.2 rooms. All right, so notice here is your graph. You're going to be spending $150 because you want at least two rooms and 10 rooms, 11 rooms, 12 rooms, 13, 14, 15, and 16, and the cost here of how much it is per room or per night rather, so $1,500 total, 1650 total, 1800 total. All right, try this one. The airline you are using for the soccer trip needs an estimate of the total weight of the team's luggage. Well, you determine that there will be 36 pieces of luggage and each piece will weigh from 25 to 45 pounds. Write a function for the total weight of the luggage. Think about if this is gonna be continuous or discrete. All right, did you come up with a function? There's going, to be, there's going to be 36 pieces of luggage and needs to be from 25 to 45 pounds. All right, well, depending on how many bags of luggage you'll have, that's the amount of X. So if I have 25 bags, it's 35 pounds each. So I can have a total of 900 pounds or 1,620 pounds. I can have those two. And this is continuous because I can have an, any amount in between 25 and 45 there. All right, have you figured out the difference between continuous and discrete? Well, looking at these specific examples really helps. Thinking about, can I have 0.5 of something, or half of something, or a quarter of something? If you can, then it's most likely going to be continuous. If you can't, like in the hotel room example, it will most likely be discrete. Here's an example now here. The function c equals 20 plus m 10m represents the amount of calories you burn after m minutes of exercising. Graph the function using a domain of 0, 5, 10, and 15. Is the domain discrete or continuous? m represents your x, so 0, 5, 10, and 15 is your domain. Plug them in, and what did you get? Did you get discrete or continuous? Well, specifically, this is a discrete domain. But think about it. Can I have, can I burn two calories? Can I burn 2.5 calories, 2.6 calories? Yeah, you can, and it's continuous because it can be broken down just like I said. You've got, maybe I've burned 2.5 calories or 10.5 calories. The domain that I gave you, yes, it was discrete, but when I graph it, I can have a continuous domain here. All right, well that's pretty much it for today. Can you tell the difference between domain that is continuous or discrete? Well congratulations, that's it for today. Uh, we have studied discrete and continuous domains. That's it. This is Matt with MattsMath.com. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems and enjoy math.